Monte Carlo 712 presents The Empire and Warriors of Chaos Conversion Years ago, I had collected the Empire as my primary armor for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and recently I started to play again in a local tournament. Originally, I had planned on starting both the Warriors of Chaos and the Ogre Kingdoms as two new armies, but ultimately decided to just go with the Ogre Kingdoms. I had received a battalion for the Warriors of Chaos, but having no use for them now, I decided to start my very first conversion series. Over the next month or so, I will be converting and painting models to add to my Empire Army, and then eventually I'll start working on my ogre army as well. These last set of models are all of my old wizards, so many of you can see the old models if you've never seen them before, but I hope to improve on the overall paint style and basing techniques on the new armies and conversions. Right now I'm working on two main unit conversions. I'm converting a unit of marauders over to a unit of Empire Free Company. And then a unit of Chaos Warriors over to Empire State Troops. But I really want these guys to look more like really kind of hard swordsmen than anything else. I feel like in the Empire kit, there's almost too much motion with the models. I kind of want a unit of swordsmen to look more like they're just slowly and meticulously marching into battle almost like they're just the aged warriors of the Empire, sort of like the fluff surrounding the Great Swordsman. Right now I have the two units converted. They're not primed or painted or anything, uh, but on the left is the Free Company with a standard bearer, a musician, and a champion. And on the right-hand side is where I have the Swordsman. I'll go through some of the models that kind of stand out for me, and I hope you guys like them too. Um, but basically what I've done is, is I've swapped out the heads uh, for empire heads and I've cut off all the hands at the wrists in order to change out the weapons. That way I can sort of keep the general arm and musculature intact um, but introduce new weapons into the actual models. All of the gaps are filled with green stuff um, and I have tried to blend everything together so that it looks, it looks like it's blended well. All of the models have their mold lines shaved down using either a hobby knife or a set of metal files. You can still see some of the marks, but everything is smooth to the touch and should disappear with priming and painting. Being Empire units, I tried to give some of the models pistols or rifles, just to create a little diversity for the eye. Others will have crossbows and longbows, but that's not as specific to the Empire. Some of the models also have a big blob of green stuff on their arms, but the intended purpose is for that to attach to a shield later on. There are more models than what I'm showing, but I think you get the general idea. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the command unit. Here is the unit champion. I decided to add a Knight of the Panther head to him and gave him a large sword and a large axe. I think that giving him a bit more armor and a bit larger weapons kind of set them out from the rest of the unit members. The musician is pretty straightforward, just a drum bearer and uh, kind of give him a unique little helmet there and a shoulder pad, but nothing too special. The standard bearer is actually bearing an Ogre Kingdom's standard. I felt that this larger standard really just fit more with the unit. It makes them look more haphazard and war-torn. I feel that a free company would have, you know, just old rags rather than an official army standard.
And now on to the warriors slash swordsmen. I won't show as many as these guys as I know the video is getting a little long and you guys are probably getting bored. I opted to use only knight helmets for this unit as these models are already pretty heavily armored it seemed to fit relatively well. I also took time and filled in the gaps with green stuff to try to mimic the fur on their capes and I think it turned out well. And just like with the Free Company, I shaved off hands um, and wrists in order to situate two swords on each model. Although, having said that, some models are bearing one sword and one war hammer. I also tried to get rid of any chaos theme um, and replace it with an empire, you know, sort of signature logo. Um, with this model, who is also bearing a war hammer, I kind of shaved off the sides and added a twin-tailed comet to either side of the hammer. It was actually a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be because it's so small, but I think the overall effect turned out relatively well. And this model typically has a horse skull uh, sort of around its neck on its chest, but instead I replaced it with sort of a, a twin-tailed comet again but I'm going to paint it as if it's engraved into the actual chest plate um, or chest armor. I wanted to choose heads that had really large plumes of feathers. That way it kind of fit a little bit better for Empire models. This model has a runic symbol on a pendant around its neck, but I filled it in with green stuff and I anticipate painting a comet onto it. And that's it guys. Um, here's the model kind of from a gaming board point of view, um, but uh, stay tuned. I'll probably have these guys painted up in the next couple of weeks or so, and hopefully it turns out well. I'm hoping to shoot for kind of a white, uh, white armor uh, look or a white sheen to it. Um, hopefully that turns out pretty well, but we'll have to we'll have to see. I might do a couple of test pieces, but uh, uh, definitely give your suggestions on color schemes and what you think might work for these guys. I'm looking for you know maybe just a little bit more monochromatic, um, but uh, please uh, rate, subscribe, tell your friends, and let me know what you think. Thanks, guys.